Hey everyone, Starfire here, and we're playing Stanley Parable. I don't know how many times I'm going to play this or whatever. I know it has multiple different endings and such, but that's about it. Um, so yeah, let's jump right in. New game. That new game. Looting. This might take a bit. Hopefully not. I'm trying to look for my phones like if they're off, just in case. Just in case I'm popular today. I'm usually not. Okay. Q. Um, hope I don't think it's gonna work, but I'm going to try to use um my controller, maybe. Oh, there we go. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company Stanley. in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor next to his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley Maybe was he's happy. a robot. Dun dun dun. And then one day something very peculiar happened. Oh. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. Someone touched him. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on a monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. <gasps> never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and walked out into the hallway. Um, okay, so apparently... Great. Okay, so my control's not working, whatever. So we'll just use my keypad. That's a bad thing. Oh, so this is what I was talking about. My um, keyboard seems a little bit broken. A little bit. Press buttons. to my reflection. Dun dun dun. Uh, oh, briefcase. Can I take it? Um, crouch, right? How do I crouch? Shoot! I can't do and I can't even jump! This is terrible. The music stopped. The clock is not moving. Uh, okay, let's just get out of here. Stanley decided to go to the staff lounge to check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself and constantly needed support and guidance from others. So the thought of total solitude was terrifying to him. Nobody's there either. Oh, spooks. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Hmm. Dun. Okay. Let's go. Why am I so loud? I'm stomping. Boom, boom, boom. I'm gonna find out the medium of this. My name's Stanley. Hello. As Stanley entered the lounge, he was horrified to find not a single person here. He decided he would walk up to see his boss hoping that he would find an answer there. My boss is gonna hear, never going to hear the end of this. I'm going to yell at him. Dr. Bruns Private Reserve. Well, I'm a little hungry. Can I, I can't eat anything. I not. There's scribbles. Scribbles. Popular science. He's attracted. Okay. Nobody in there either. That's a light. Lights flashing. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. This is the best story ever. Where's my boss? He's not here. 
Entering his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. It was at this point that he began to feel dizzy and a little sick, and even thought he might pass out when suddenly he noticed a keypad next to the filing cabinet in the oh, corner of his boss's before. office. Stanley had never seen this panel before and had no idea what combination of numbers would produce any result. In fact, only Stanley's boss knew this, since the panel withheld access to the boss's greatest, darkest secret. And so he had assigned the keypad a combination that only he could possibly know. Hmm. The number of his freshman hmm. dorm number in college. One, nine, five, seven. But One, of course, Stanley couldn't nine, possibly have known this. Five, seven. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. Stanley ventured forth into the newly opened passageway. Oh, he's scared. As he drew I deeper into the, the bowels of the building, Stanley had no idea where he was Doors. or what this place held. And just as he began to think he might not discover a thing, he emerged into a long room to find uh. rows and rows of monitors. Screens with a number above it. Stanley noticed, however, that these were not random numbers, but the number of employees who worked in the building, his co-workers. Even his own number, 427, had a place on the wall. But why a setup so elaborate, he asked. Was this simple surveillance, or something even more? And as if in answer to his question, the wall slid open before him, revealing the ultimate truth of the situation. There's... Ladders. Buttons. An enormous control panel, Stanley discovered. Oh, but yeah. not one that controlled simple machinery. Buttons were labeled with emotions. Happy. Sad. Levers and knobs controlled actions. Walking. Eating. Doing work. Or watching TV. Every input on this device monitored not the functions of a machine, but of a human being. And the reality began to sink in. Stanley, like so many other people, reduced to images on a monitor, had been under someone's control, always at the mercy of this machine. Could this have been the only reason employee number 427 was content with his boring job? That a machine had altered his emotions to accept it blindly? He began to feel an unbridled rage, and at the peak of his anger, something happened. A spark. Stanley looked up and saw the generator overhead, oh, no. still providing yeah, some yeah. small amount of power to the machine, Mad he. keeping it alive. And knowing that this generator was all that kept the controls running, Stanley moved to the oh. ladder in the back of the room and began to climb towards the rafters. But isn't Stanley a machine or whatever? So when he just shut the down... The higher Stanley climbed, the closer he felt to freedom. The further from enslavement. Go on, go on here. I don't think I cannot. Oops, go away. Oh. What do I do, Mr. Narrator? Do I do I disable it? We're gonna engage generator oh Stanley you didn't just activate the controls did you after it kept you enslaved all these years you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself is that what you wanted control Stanley <laughs> Stanley, Stanley. <laughs> I applaud your effort I really do but you need to understand there's only so much that machine can do. You were meant to let it go, turn the controls off and leave. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do better than that. You're a jerk. I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you have. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized that he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. 
In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, nuclear detonators are set to explode, eliminating the entire complex. Um. How long until detonation then? Oh, let's make it say, um, two minutes. Now, this is making things a little more fun, isn't it, Stanley? Oh, Go ahead, sure. play with those controls all you like. The real controls are where I'm sitting. Did you really ever believe you held any power? Did you not think I knew what I was doing? When I erased your co-workers and turned off the machine, I was offering you freedom and escape. I didn't have to do that. I've run this story many times and I don't always set you free. Sometimes you just sit there, day after day after day, doing your job forever and then dying alone. But when I actually give you the freedom to control your own actions, it's not enough. I let you go, and you trapped yourself just the same. You just weren't made to handle this sort of responsibility, I'm afraid. Well, but you know what you were made for? Pushing buttons. <laughs> you get it now? Oh, I'm enjoying this. Tell you what, I'll throw some extra time on the clock just because I'm having so much fun. There we go. You see, I want to watch you for every long second you try to puzzle this out. After all, it should make sense, right? You the timer, the nuclear detonation, the mysterious facility, it's all here. This is a video game. Except for one thing there, hero. You've got no weapon, no vehicle. You don't even know where you're going. When you saw that timer, you just instinctively started trying to find an exit, didn't you? Yeah. In fact, I bet you're still looking for a way out. I bet you're clicking on everything in this room, trying to open doors or vents or something and solve the puzzle. As though this game has a solution, as though it can be won. That timer is not a catalyst to keep things moving along. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. This is not a challenge. It's a tragedy. It's the moment when the hero realizes that despite his best efforts, he is powerless to his environment. And then he lets go. He surrenders. And he surrender. dies. 30 out. seconds, Stanley. 30 seconds. Until a boom. And then nothing. No ending to this story, just you die. I suppose you could have gotten an actual ending if you played along, but that just wouldn't have been your style, you didn't would tell it? Me what to do. Instead, you'll perish knowing that the only choice you made here was to turn on that machine and to start this timer. But you won't be alone, because I'm not going anywhere. I'll be here to watch every second of your inevitable life from the time we fade in until me. the no. moment I say, no. happily ever after. gosh well uh, that was Stanley parable I, I think I'm gonna play again I'll maybe right now who knows uh, but uh, that was kind of terrible I didn't want to die <laughs> really didn't um, so I was supposed to disable obviously well I was thinking maybe if I enable it like I would still keep living or something, I don't know. But he was a jerk. So, thank you for if you enjoyed, subscribe to become a meteor, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching. Bye!